city of life where there cometh no night and the sun never sets in the sky in the Bible we're told that the streets are pure gold and a cool gentle river runs by I'm bound for that city God's holy white city oh yes I am I'll never turn back to this world anymore no matter how rough may be the way no matter how oft I stop to pray I'm bound for that city all that ever green shore little children will play all our
Thank you for coming out on this real pleasant night. Takes a lot of water to get a Baptist in, but it don't take much to get them out. So I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad I'm here. Amen. Glad the glad Spirit of God comes back. Uh, it's hard to, have, hard to have service without Him. Thank you, Brother Dave, for letting me have this opportunity to be here these few nights. I hope this will be a help. Had every intention of going into Luke, but uh, it all got uh, swallowed up. Genesis 32, verse, well, I tell you what, let's go read verse number 9 first. If you'll stand with me, please, just in reverence to the Word of God. If you're able, if you're not physically able, well, you're, you're excused. That'd be just fine. Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord, which said unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy, he's praying now, 9, 10, 11, and 12's prayer. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies of all the truth, which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Verse 11, deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother and from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. And thou saidest, uh, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. Now flip over, I will anyway, to verse 22. Verse number 22, same chapter. And he rose up that night, took his two wives and his two women servants, and his eleven sons, Benjamin hadn't got here yet, and passed over the book Ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God, and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou doest ask after my name? And he blessed him there. Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face. That's what Peniel means. And my life is preserved. And as he passed over Peniel, it's the same, same place, different spelling. The sun arose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sinew, which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh unto this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh, in the sinew that strength. Thank you for standing with me. I ain't really got a text. I'm just going to preach to one point and go through the other two pretty fast and preach one point. I've never preached it this way. Jacob in chapter 25 is born. He and his brother Esau. Esau means red. Harry said he was very hairy and red. She took to Jacob. Now, Romans 9, verse 13 said that God loved Jacob, hated Esau. Malachi 1, verse 2 said he hated Esau. Verse 3 of Malachi 1 said he loved Jacob. The question was asked years ago. I read this years ago. Or somebody said it years ago, and I picked it up. They said, how could he say he loved, how could he say he hated Esau? And somebody said, how could he say he loved Jacob? Most of all of us, including me, I can relate to Jacob very 
very easily. Most of us uh, weren't real good until we got saved and then found out you wasn't good at all. Romans 3.23, Romans 3.10, there's none good, none righteous. You find that out. Some folks find it out later. I got in legalism after a couple of years of me being a preacher. I got in legalism pretty bad. And I started putting myself here and everybody else was here. Very few preachers ever made it up on the level I was on. I could quote close, close to, I don't know, 1,200, 1,500 verses verbatim anytime, anywhere. Can't do it now. I've lost, I've lost that ability. I know some, but it's not that important for me to quote 1,200 verses of Scripture. You don't want to hear them anyway tonight. I'm telling you that when, when as I heard somebody say years ago, that God shot the water out of him, literally unstuffed his shell, and blew the barrel out, and he found out what he was. Brother Bill Pace, Jeremiah 17, 9, Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the heart is desperately wicked, deceitful. Brother Bill Pace is a good, great guy, good man of God. I, I love Bill Pace. They've been through all kinds of death in a home, stayed faithful, still are faithful. He's right now battling a stroke. I'm just asking the Lord to get his left hand to work in where he can play the piano again. I really, my heart goes out to him. I relate to the fact that he wants to play, but he can't. I thought, I wonder how it would be I got where I couldn't get both hands to work. He said, I didn't have a problem with Jeremiah 17, 9 until I found out it was talking to me. When you, when you start to find out, and I'm going to preach that point tonight. When you start to find out exactly what you are, Isaiah, or Psalms 58, 3 said you came from the womb speaking lies. And sometimes you'll lie now. It's simply because you, there's two, two, Genesis 25, she went to Jacob, or went to uh, uh, Isaac and treated him for a, for a child. Isaac goes to God and God was entreated from Isaac so she, he brought her children. She started uh, in, the, in the mother way. But after about three, four months, we understand you can start feeling kids kick. After I got a two year old, a five year old, a six year old, they're still kicking right now. But the same mom can feel the child kicking. Amy, my daughter said about three months said you kind of like a little peach, and then it starts getting stronger. She was, she was having war in the womb. And it said, Genesis 25 said they struggled. The word struggle means to crush. One's trying to kill the other. It, it ain't one-sided. Jacob just is sorry in the womb as Esau is. God, she entreated God. She didn't go to Isaac. She went straight to God. She said, I don't understand what's going on. There are a lot of Christians who do not understand the battle. They don't understand the struggle because there's a Esau hanging on you and a Jacob on the inside of you. And they're, they're both fighting each other. Now, unless Jacob gets to where Jabbok is, Jacob ain't never going to be able to, to survive the fight. Now, people said, I, I was told years ago I was a real strong person. I found out I was a real strong person. I found out I was an extremely weak person. I found out that I could sin just like everybody else could. I didn't think I could for a long time, but I found out that I could. And I, after you fall and you recognize it's the grace of God, that's how, that's how Brother Dave and Miss Amanda talk, taught those kids how to walk. You picked them up and backed off and said, come here. Then you know they're going to fall, but at least you're trying to get them to walk. And that's what God's trying to do. Get us and try as a bad, it's a lack of voc vocabulary on my part. God ain't trying to do anything. God already knows what he's doing. But he has to work. How, 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 how fast did they go in the wilderness? Fast enough for a little kid and an old man to stay up with them. You have got to, Brother Raymond Cook, anybody ever heard of Raymond Cook? I believe some of y'all may have met his path. What a, what a wonderful fellow he was to me. He told me years ago when I started passing the first church and had a little snag blow up and boy, I ran straight to Brother Cook. He sat me down and patted me on my knee and he said, Brother Dave, he said, you ain't gonna pastor him if you run him off. He said, you're gonna have to, and he said, it feels like compromise, but he said, it's really flex. You're gonna have to flex because if some of them can't keep up, some of them are never gonna be able to keep up. Some of them will never want to keep up. But he said, you, you're, you're supposed to pastor them and a pastor's got that flock heart, wants to flock them, not fleece them every Sunday, but flock them, bring them together and feed them, not just fleece, but they need fleeced at least once a year. You got, you got my authorization to skin them, now fleece them at least once a year. You don't skin them, you kill them. Fact is, 
it, it, it takes time. And I, last Saturday, a week ago, it's 39 years since I surrendered the call to preach. And about five and a half months before that, I got saved. And I, I wish, I would to God you could learn. I don't know what I don't know. I, I don't know how much longer I got in this world. And I don't know what I don't know. But I know tonight a lot of things I didn't know a year or two after I started preaching. And certainly didn't know nothing about it while I first started pastoring. I want to I wanna tell you that the struggle in, in you is just as real as that rain is outside. And if it's not real, you ain't in yet. If, if you get in, I'm telling you, brother, if, you, if you're in, you, have a, you, you realize, I don't know what's going on. Uh, Re- Rebecca didn't know what was going on. She said, God, I don't get this. What's, what's happening inside? It's, it's, they're struggling. One's trying to crush the other. Esau trying to strangle and Jacob's trying to strangle the Esau. They, both of them are wanting to be first. But God's already chosen who's going to be first. Rebecca didn't have to go through all that shenanigans and lying to, to Isaac. They made a bad choice. One chose this one and Isaac chose the other one. That's terrible to do that for children. You, you, wife chose one, the husband chose another. And I ain't got time to go through all, through all that. But, but that's, a, that's a real bad thing to do with children. I mean, they, they pick up on it pretty fast if there's favoritism amongst the children. They, they, they already got this problem, and I'll and I move off of this. She never, I never read after she done all that trash, lied, got him to lie to his daddy, stole, stole the blessing, he got it, but I never read where Jacob ever seen his mother again. Isaac, he helped bury him, and Ishmael helped bury him. He and, and Esau buried their daddy, but I don't read where he ever seen his mother again. There are, there are repercussions to lies that are, people are telling. Chapter 28, it's, not, it's in that economy, not in ours. If he's in our economy, in our day and time, he just got saved in chapter 28. There's where he's seen the latter in, in the chapter 28 of Genesis. There he's seen the latter, the angels, not seraphims and cherubims, but angels, messengers, wingless men, never seen an angelic woman, well, not, not in the next world I have in this one, but uh, got married one. And the fact is that he's seen angels ascending that's uh, going up and coming down. They're already here. They're going up. Why are they going up and coming down? Messages. They're bringing messages to mankind. We don't, we don't know all about that ladder. But, but see, Jacob didn't see a ladder in chapter 32. He's seen, he seen the Lord in chapter 32. There was a band of angels there in chapter, in verse one of chapter 32, I read to you, they, he's seen a band of angels there. Might have been the same bunch. And they were there for protection. There's fire for revelation in chapter 25. And in 32, they're there for his protection. Now the reason I read his prayer, he's got saved, he's got blessed. He's got blessed in chapter 28. In chapter 32, in the first part of it, he has, is going to get broken. I want to remind you, check me out on this, he is 114 years old in chapter 32 of the book of Genesis. He's an old man when he, when he deceived his daddy. He's in his 70s, he's in his 80s. He's 20 years at Uncle Laban's house, so somewhere around, around 90, 80, 90, 95, we, we don't know for sure, my speculation, but he's an old man when he deceived his daddy. Well, no 80, 90 year old man lying to his daddy. He's a wanting that blessing. The blessing says you get an extra piece of property. You get the second blessing. You get the double portion. And you also the priest of the, church, of, the, of the house. You're the one that's going to be the spiritual God and the progenitor of the family. It means your offspring and it did. Jacob's offspring brought forth Christ. Esau's offspring brought forth Herod. And both of them met in Jerusalem. I want to tell you, I want to tell you that he's, he's blessed. He's got saved. Boy, the day I got saved, June 23, 1976, that was, a, that was a wonderful day. My troubles were over. But then the sun came up the next morning. They weren't over. You, and I'm just starting on this journey. 39 years. I'd go back and change a few things for good. But, but 39 years, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't stop the process. I would have sped it up further back in my teens or possibly as a 10 year old, 12 year old, I would have carried it back further. I wouldn't have the scars that I got on me tonight. I'm just, I'm just telling you that there's a battle out there but you first gotta have a starting place or you ain't never been saved. Amen. He'd go back to Bethel in chapter 20, 28. 
And he will go back to Bethel in 33, 32 and 33, but he had to have a Bethel. You gotta have a Bethel. That's, that says the house of God, Bethel. Bethel, the house of God, E-L. God, house of God, El Bethel is the God of the house of God. It ain't just getting to Bethel, it's God getting with you at Bethel. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That, that religion will carry you to hell, Amen. but that experience at Bethel will get you to heaven. Praise the Lord. I'm bound for a city. I'm happy about that. Amen. Well, he's got blessed in chapter 28. Now he's going to get broke. He's wrestling when he's birthed and he's wrestling when he's broke. Tough. 114-year-old man. He's tough. He has never seen himself the way God sees him. He has never looked in the mirror and the mirror's never cleaned anybody. James said, said a man will hold himself in a glass, a mirror, said and sees what man a person he is, but he leave it. And he said he don't do anything about it. He's a hearer, but not a doer. There's a lot of them folk. But the mirror can, can, uh, can it, it, you know, it reveals, but it cannot, you know, expunge the dirt and the trash and the wrong. The mirror says, you need help. And then here comes in that scrubbing brush of grace and comes in with penitence where you can get in. I'm just, I'm just glad that I know that I know First John three fourteen. I know that I'll pass from death unto life. I know it, it's already passed. It ain't gonna pass, it's already passed. I'm, I'm as sure, John 15, 16, my name is written there. I'm gonna get caught up with it one of these days. So I'm, I'm happy about that tonight. Can you tell? I'm happy about that. And if I'm red now, I'm all right. I've been doing this 39 years. I ain't going to stroke out on you. I mean, if I do, it'll be all right. But I'm just telling you, I've been doing this a long time. And I'm real fair complexion. Fact is that he gets broke in 32. About, about verse number 22, 23, 24. Now he got alone. He sent over. He's prayed this beautiful prayer. That, that, uh, that what is about 10, uh, 9 to 12, 8 to 12. In this chapter, he prayed a beautiful prayer. And God said, I'm going to take care of you. He even told him in the first part of chapter 32. He said, I want you to go back. I want you to go back. It's a 500-mile journey. It's about three, about uh, somewhere between two and three months with children, with the wives. Four wives they ain't never understood four at a time. But the fact is that they, they, they going back, they got a 500-mile trip. A camel can handle 10 to 15, 220 miles a day. With children, it's going to slow it down. Camel handling 30 days or less. But I say three months journey. He's got to go by, right by Mount Seir, Edom. He's got to go right by where Esau's at. God, listen, listen to this man. 114 years old. He already has had God tell him in the first part of 32. He said, he said, you go back to your family. And then he starts praying. He said, I know you'll take care of me. You've got me this far. I know you'll take care of me. And he's still conniving. Read the whole story if you don't know it. Read the story he sends over about 50 at a time and maybe if they just kill them 50, maybe they won't get the rest of us and we'll escape. He's having a problem of believing the word of God. He's having trouble. He's not getting wind of the wist out of the the air. He's not getting these sounds out of the air. He is getting these things in his heart. Remember Elijah? He hears the word of God. He hears the voice of God. And then he hears hears the word of God in the cave. There's a difference there. There's a a reason there's a difference there. I'm just telling you that Jacob is still, the word Jacob is supplanter, liar, thief, pickpocket. That's who he is. Even Esau said in chapter 26, 27, he said, he said he has done it twice to me. He supplanted me two times. And he said, when dad's gone, I'll kill him. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't kill something that won't die. God's got the man protected, but he's gonna take him roughly 20 years to get a 90 year old to 114 year old. It's gonna take him that long for this man to get to the place he will will let God break him. If you never get broke, you'll never get used to what God wants to be using you. I've been broke, been broke quite a few times. Pull him, use, don't kick him. Kick him, use, don't pull. You kicking, you ain't pulling. You pulling, you ain't kicking. I don't like a few things. I don't like a lot of things, but I have learned to let go. I've learned to flex. I've learned to get over some things at our church. 
I've learned to get over some things in revival meetings. I've learned to get over a few things. And, and, and it, it makes you happier in your heart because you get to the place, look, if God has opened up a door for me to go to Birmingham or, or somewhere in Mississippi or here in Fort Payne, I just want to thank God, first of all, that he even thought about me, want me to come to that place to preach to him. I had a guy the other day called, uh, it was uh, uh, Larry McKenzie. I thought he was getting a booking down in Gulfport, Mississippi, and it turned out to be a guy just got released from prison that I had preached to down there. And uh, I thought, man, he ain't booking me for nothing. Hey, man, he can't even get out of state of Mississippi for a year and a half. I'm just, I'm just telling you after we got off that phone I was happier that he called than 12 preachers down in Gulfport, Mississippi I'm telling you he was just thankful to God he was just happy pulled 15 years for something probably he wouldn't even got put in prison for now I'm just, I'm just simply telling you after a while God has got to break you down let you see that you ain't what you thought you was and let you see unless God breaks you he'll never Brain you. And that's why I don't preach on tonight. Just a few minutes and I don't keep long. He branded him. Broke, blessed him 20 years earlier. Then he broke him. God could have pinned him any time. God could have touched his, one of them arteries. He'd have stopped. He'd have shut his mouth. God could have just grabbed him by his wrist and squeezed and he'd have folded up like a, like a cheap suit. God's not after your flesh, y'all. He's after your spirit. He's after your soul. He wants you to surrender to him. He wants to use you. Listen, folk. This, what felt, I felt a while ago, I'm telling you, Brother Dave, Miss Amanda, Brother Glenn, Miss, Miss Water, whoever he's married to, Sandy. <laughs> he's still married to her. I seen her a while ago. But, I mean, we, we, you know, I've been in meetings all my life. I, was, I got born into the fire. I mean, when I got right with the Lord, God saved, there was, the fire was on where I was at. When I left it, I went to the deadest church that was in Tennessee, the first church, and I thought I was going to die, and it wasn't about a year, year and a half, the fire started coming through. They got hungry to feel that old fire. They didn't even know what it was. I, I tell them about it, and they didn't have a clue what it was. They said, why don't you bring in somebody and bring that with them? And, I, and after a while, it fell on them. you got to want the, what went through this choir. you got to want that. By the way, I enjoyed you singing. Let me tell you, I may not like it the rest of the week, but I enjoyed tonight. I'm just telling you, you got to want this. He's a gentleman of the highest, most honorable. He's the most honorable gentleman you ever met. He will not force himself on you. He'll just, if you don't open the door, that's just your loss. Folks said, well, I believe I nearly shouted. What you did is you, you squinched. The old boy up in North Carolina said, you just, you just squinched the spirit. You didn't quench it, you squinched it. Amen. I want to I wanna say I believe a whole lot of folk would probably 1 Timothy 2, 8, raise up, hold hands without wrath and doubt it. But, but uh, and it ain't always because, they, you know, they Dr. Jekyll at the house and Mr. Hyde, you know, somewhere else. I don't believe it's all that. I just believe, I just believe some folks are just a little afraid of the Holy Spirit. I believe some folks say, Lord Jesus, we, we've seen it in the life. Lord, how mercy in this, all kinds of devils started coming to church. All kinds, you can pre-preach that book, the devils will stay out of here. Snakes can't handle hot and cold weather. You get it cold enough, you don't want to come. But if you get hot enough, he don't want to come. He meets outside. That's, that's the, when you get branded, down there at Oak Grove, it started, and, and it did start through the Kirby family. I think Glenn got saved one day, and then Sandy got saved the next day. And, and I think Miss, Miss Amanda got saved maybe a week or two later. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that's, that's not so. Can I turn it off? It's on. It's on. You can hear me all right. Well, it started down there, just Bring in a kid, bring in a teenager. It just started, and I'm telling you, God, you're talking about shallow preaching, friend. I don't, I can't preach no more shallow than I did down there for 12, 15 minutes. 12, 15 minutes. I was wore out. I beat up. I mean, Holy Ghost, I did turn it off. You don't know what you're talking about, Brother Dave. How about it now? It's on now. God started moving through the church. Just, and it got to be close to a Russian mighty wind there a few times. Kids started coming. Then they started bringing their parents and the other parents come. I mean, we, we was looking some pictures the other night at the house. I don't even know who them kids was. Got out of my mind. Folks was coming in. That little old church seat about a hundred and a half and is about full. I just, I'm just convinced it ain't got nothing to do 
where it used to be. I believe it's got what to do what we don't want it to be now. See, if you've ever been in that, you branded. If you ever get around that spot where the good Holy Ghost is coming out, you're branded. You can't get over it. You don't want to get over it. I preached to close to 200 people last Tuesday night, and I'm telling you, I didn't give a rip. A preacher before church said, oh, oh, Sam Gully. Sam said, now, Brother Dave, don't you get up there and just whistle around with it. Tell it, boy. He said, preach it. I said, I don't know how to do it any other way. I just, I'm just me. If I'm Papa, I yam what a yam. Amen. And I'm, I mean, I wasn't trying to put on a show. I'm just preaching them the word of God. And, and it appears they're talking about getting me back. Can you believe that? I'm close to Huntsville, boy. It's dead out there. It's in city out there. I'm just, I'm just telling you that people are wanting that old stuff, but you ain't got to ship it in. You just let, let it come through you. And if you haven't been under that shouting spirit, you haven't been under that leap, leap year spirit, you know, you can't stay on the ground, you're up in the air more. I mean, you're just happy as you can be. You're going to work tomorrow. My God, how, how does that make you feel? I'm just telling you right now, church ought to be that old stuff, that old branded stuff, that Thank God I made it here. Hey, you don't give a rip who the preacher is. If God comes through, if you're branded the rest of your life. That's the reason it's difficult. Because folks are coming in, they got, a, they got that neo way. Neo means new. They got that new way. Got them new books. If you ain't got a KJV, you ain't gonna be able to follow me. 1611 authorized version. I want it so bad, I'll do anything to, I'll, if they told me they was going to have it in the Sistine Chapel in Rome Friday, I'd be flying over there tomorrow. I wore a robe, turn it around while I'd kick through, you know, the split. I'd, I'd wear, I'd put the little hat on. I'd do anything if I knew God was coming through the Sistine Chapel in Rome. Peter would get up and shout. I imagine they say he's down in the bottom of that thing. I'm just, I'm just telling you he's blessed and then God broke him. What's your name? The last time somebody asked him his name, he, he didn't have the same name. <coughs> Lord touched him, hall of his thigh. It's a hip joint. They say it's real painful. What's your name? Could have pinned him any time. But he, didn't, he wasn't going to pin him fleshly. He wanted him to break on his own accord. And that's what he did. 114 years old. 114 years old. He'll live to be 140. He'll, see, he'll lose Jacob about 120, and he'll see Jacob again about 130. And then he'll have 17 years in Egypt. He'll die at 147 years of age. You would think God would have broke him right after he blessed him. He ain't left up with God. He's left up with you. He knows if you'll break. He knows if you want to break. I told him something years ago that I never told nobody, including my wife. And I mean it. I mean it with all my heart. God don't, nobody says when the guy pulls it back and lets it go. Nobody brags on that arrow. Ah, what a pretty arrow. Did you see the flight of that arrow? Wow, what an arrow. No, it's not the arrow. It's the archer. See, I'm an arrow. Some first 25 years of my preaching, I wanted to be the one pulling the bow back. I wanted to be, sometimes I preach just to get to work and preach again. I've had people pull me in at Boaz 30 years ago. I was tough, I was mean. Preacher called me in, oh, there's 350, 400 people there, and he said, I know how you preach, don't change today. And I didn't. I whooped them, skinned them, beat them, left them bleeding. I'm ashamed of it. I'm ashamed of it. God needs shepherds. He don't need state troopers. Not in the church. He touched the hollow thigh and popped that thing out of joint. And he'll never walk the same again. He'll never speak the same again. Because every time he takes a step, there's some pain. The word halt means to hesitate. Drug it, limp. He's limping, but he's loyal. He's crippled, but he's conquered. Branded. What happened to your knee? How happened to your hip? Have a seat.
I'll tell you about it. God came directly to him. Not his wife, not one of the four. Not the servants. He was a very, very wealthy man. He was a very, very strong man. He had servants. He had men. He was extreme. God said he'd come back wealthy. He'd come back wealthy. But he didn't come back broke. Uncle Laban changed his, changed his wages ten times. And old Jack was lying to him all the, every step of the way. God was waiting on him to break. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, I believe it was, said, Thank you, Spurgeon. The world is yet to see. Take that back. What's Spurgeon? England. Charles Haddon Spurgeon. D.L. Moody heard him say it. That's the reason I've got this. I read it in his book. Spurgeon said the world is yet to see one man totally devoted to God. Well, Percy Ray, Dr. Percy Ray out of Myrtle, Mississippi, heard that same statement that I read. He read it. And he said, I'll be that man. Fasted on nothing but clear water for 40 days. Nothing, clear water. And at the end of it, he started talking to the Lord. Just going as far as he could go. And he said, God, and he didn't, he didn't have the extra. He didn't have the, what he thought he needed, what he thought he wanted. Now, Moody was asking God for the power of God and fell on a two-block long street in Chicago, Illinois. And they had to carry him to an apartment. And he stayed there for a week. And finally, at the end of the week, he said, God, please, I can't take no more. It's just too much glory, too much God. That'll change you. Of course, D.L. Moody shook two continents too because God changed him, broke him. You will never, God will never brand you unless he first breaks you. John 6 blesses the food, breaks the food, and then broadcasts it. That's the pattern. Blesses it. Boy, you know that, that fish and bread must have had a good taste when he got through blessing it. He blessed the food, broke it, then he broadcasted it, said, here, give this out. That's his way. Branded to him. The rest of his life, he's all, I got gout. It hadn't been on me in a long time. I'm not bragging. Oh, Lord, please, don't even think I'm bragging that it ain't hit me in a while. It ain't hit me in a while. Because it can hit me when I get home. That's how fast it can get up on you. And when you got gout in the ankle for sure, you need a cane. And it draws attention to you, especially when everybody that knows you, what are you doing with that cane? And, and it's embarrassing to me, to be quite honest with you. I woke up one morning with a black eye. I don't know if Elaine got me. I don't know what took place, but she was just a pretty shiner. I go down to church and everybody else, what happened to you? What? What? I, what do you mean? I don't know. What? We got a black eye. I got a black eye. I just acted ignorant. Didn't act that much. It embarrasses you. We didn't go out to eat that day, by the way. We went home. Brother Kenneth, <laughs> I think it was Brother Kenneth, somebody asked him, Ricky, going out. He said, no, Brother Dave's going home. I was as embarrassed. I was. I looked like I'd been in a brawl, lost it. It's embarrassing to me. And I've had, I've had to have a cane. Sometimes I'll walk, uh, the old roller, the, the walker, the wheels on it, just run around the house, throw your leg on. It feels real good. It, did, it hurts. It hurts. And you, you just, you don't feel like a full man when you got one of your, you know, your tires about blowed out and you can't get them to roll. And you, it don't make you, it just makes you feel lesser than you. You know, it's, it's the pride comes out of you. And I, I, it's, it's embarrassing to me. I don't, I don't want to go out and eat because I've got this cane. Well, what's wrong with you? And you have to go through it all. Everybody you see, you know, wherever you eat at. And, and so I understand, I understand this thing. But see, when you get broke, now, if God was using gout to break me, well, my heavens, I should never complain again. I'm just simply telling you, he's not going to tear your, your hip bone out of socket. I don't believe that. I don't believe God's going to just wad you up and tear something away from you, a child or a grandchild. It's not his style. But if he breaks you, he's got to get you at the right place at the right time. And he's got to show you. He said, what's your name? And he ended up, he confessed it up. I'm a thief. I'm a pickpocket, I'm a supplanter. I'll steal, I'll lie to you, is what I'll do. He just confessed it and God said, no more. You'll never be called Jacob, even though it takes two chapters for Israel to ever pop on him. But he said, you'll never be called Jacob again, be called Israel. Israel means God controlled, is what that means. He said, you'll be as a prince. Do you know what the word prince is in Hebrew? It's the same word for Sarah. 
Shocked the wax out of me when I found that out a few weeks ago. The same Hebrew spelling is the same way you spell Sarah's name. And she happened to be a princess of many nations. A mother of many nations. Even though she laughed and lied, I didn't, I didn't laugh. Tell God I didn't laugh. That's amazing, ain't it? But, but she was a principal woman. Peter, 1 Peter 3 said she called him Lord. She, he lived like one. He, he call, she called him Lord. And she's an example. An example of what, what even though she makes mistakes, got the Israelis, uh, or the Arabs here, got all these Islams here because she makes the mistake. And we still pay him for her little problem back in that day. But I'm just simply telling you, we'll take care of Ezekiel 37, 38. God will take care of that problem that we'll along with Russia when we get there. But the, the, the fact that God said what is your name? And then Jacob said, what's your name? Because read your book. God's got quite a few different names. It means t- quite a few different things. And he said, it's not important you know my name. It's important you recognize who you are. And then he got broke. He halted the rest of his life. And everything's going to be perfect now. No. Chapter 35. Two, three. Chapter 34. Dinah is molested. Two brothers take out a city. That's heartache. Probably got a kid. I, I don't even remember quite reading that. I don't know if she brought forth a child or not, but I know she got molested. Chapter 37, Joseph's dead. And that's his pick by his pick wife, Rachel. Don't mean everything's wonderful just because you're branded, y'all. You just, can't, you just can't get past. I'm bound for a city when the Spirit of God comes through. Amen. That's branded. Amen. And if you don't like it, Amen. something wrong with you. Amen. Promise. You ain't where you need to be. You're still total Jacob if you don't like it when the Spirit of God. And I've seen the Spirit of God. I've seen the Spirit of God touch folks that I knew wasn't living. It's totally correct. And I'd marvel. But then when you start thinking about it, <laughs> boy, something hit me the other day, and I won't dare tell you or nobody else. Something hit me the other day about somebody, and, and it went, who? That mirror turned on me, and I said, oh, Lord, you're right. You're absolutely right. I have no rights. I, I hate gossip. I hate gossip. These times I can't talk to your pastor. He's in that mood. And I say, Dave, I got to go. I got to go. He never tells nothing about y'all. Y'all must be pretty good folk. He never says nothing bad about y'all. He never. He never. He's never pinpointed. He's never named names. He gets discouraged. But he, he ain't never been against you. He's branded. Some of you may not be branded. This guy's branded. He's, he's been there where I've been. I want to see it so bad. I want to feel it so bad. I'd love to roll in here tomorrow night and y'all take this thing and just scream, holler, and run. I'll, I'll just kick you back in where you won't fall down much. It won't hurt my feelings. I want my check. But I don't have to preach. No, you ask me to come. I'm coming. I, I want my check. But I, I'll be glad to listen to y'all shout. I don't care if you sing one song and all and, and, and vent verses. It don't make no difference. It's because the man's branded. His wife's branded. We, I've seen the little lady shout because she couldn't shout no more. It ain't just because somebody got saved. It's just the fact God comes swinging through. I'm telling you, there ain't nothing like it. Amen. There ain't nothing like it when God comes by. There ain't no reason to wave if ain't nobody coming by to wave to, y'all. I've been on the front porch of my at dad's house and I'm a kid. On the, at their grant back 1958, 59, 60. Everybody come by wave at you and your daddy and mother waving. Well, there wasn't nobody coming by. They ain't no use of waving. They take you away if you're waving and ain't nobody there, you know. Well, that's, that's just the way it is. I'm not going to wave just because you're singing Amazing Grace. But if Amazing Grace gets amazing, I'm going to wave with you. Because he's coming by. He came through just a few minutes ago. Branded. That's, that's, that's what our problem is, y'all. We're in a 21st century, but we're in a 1950 heart, and God wants to bless us. You've got to get to the place I won't broke, and I'll be glad to be branded. 
Because I know I've been blessed. I'm, I can carry you to the place I got saved. I'm sure you can. You've got a Bethel. I've got a Bethel. It branded him. And it's, it's reason you feel like a fish out of water sometimes. Dead Joseph and then alive Joseph. Molested daughter. 35. Rachel dies. That's his girl. That's his, that's his, that's his soulmate. That's the one he worked 14 years for. 14 years. He loved her. Seen her from here up. While they weren't dating. Because they didn't date. He seen her from here up. And mine, I've seen her very often because of the veil. But that's all he ever got to see. And he just fell head over heels in love with her. And old Laban carried him to the woodpile. And he served seven Laban slipped him the wrong girl and he served seven more years for Rachel. That's love. And he buries her. Sometimes God will break your heart to get it. Got a balloon of, of water and a balloon of seven up. When you mash it, that's what's coming out of it. You squeeze it hard enough, and seven up's coming out of one of them, and water's coming out of the other one. And you mash it hard enough, pride will come out, envy, strife, retribution. That's the last thing I do, I get even. You mash it hard enough. That's what he done. It jabbed. He emptied. And that's what Jack, I think I told you already, jabbed means empty. He emptied him. If you've ever been emptied and God fills it up with himself, totally changes your name to God controlled, and then sends you out, gives you a, he's already had his staff there in his prayer, sends him out. And for the rest of his life, that staff is going to be extremely important to him for the rest of his life because that's his crutch. That's his, that's his mode of operation. God has just branded Jacob. Can I ask you, and I'm done. Can I ask you something? Can you go back the day you got blessed to the place? Now, you may not remember the day, time, hour, month of the year. I know I can get it within 15 minutes, I think. I believe I can get it close within 15 minutes the day I got saved on June 13, 1976. Where it was, when it was, pretty much how it was. I just don't know why it was. But he came to me. And the Lord saved me. Five and a half months later, and about four of them were just miserable because I was getting a call to preach. I couldn't enjoy nothing. Somebody say something about called, and I thought this after me when they preach. I just eat up with it. Finally gave up. Boy, I thought I'm in the perfect will of God. Everything's going to be wonderful, but it ain't. It took years, quite a few years, and he started breaking. And I quizzed him when he did that night in my house on the floor. Now, you don't get answers when you ask God questions. Trust me, you don't get one answer. But I asked anyway, and I knew better. I said, why did you take so long? And then it takes me until I'm 64 to figure it out. I couldn't get broke then. He had to get me where I could get broke. He emptied me in the floor of my house. He emptied me, and I was so, so ashamed of my lifestyle. Not, not the fact it was sin, but the fact it was so self-centered. I was ashamed, and I found out what true love really was. It was love that delivered me from legalism. It was love that got me from at least 25 years from being called to preach. And I thought I was doing pretty good. I was running with them big dogs out of Georgia, North Carolina. Kentucky. Then I found out they weren't all them big dogs after he entered me. And I don't want to run the big dogs no more. I don't even want a big dog at the house. I'll take a little one, but not a big dog. You see, now 
what my life's going to amount to or ministry's going to amount to is yet to be seen. But now I've found out what the ministry is. Now if your life is only about work, and your life is only about the children or the grandchildren, that's your whole life, and it is part of it. I got it. I, I understand that, that, oh, yes, there comes the children. Oh, yes, there they go. I love to see them coming. Just love to see them going. <laughs> seen the lights of England, seen the lights of Rome. I ain't never seen a prettier light than the lights of my child's tail lights on her car carrying my grandchildren home. <laughs> Those are good looking lights. I understand you just get overwhelmed. I went to Bill Pace and I said, Brother Bill, and I told him what I was going, what I was going through. He said, went through the same thing, Brother Dave. I thought I'm losing my mind, that first grandchild, that first baby. So I understand that. But you set the child here and you limp over to the altar and you say, Lord, I'm, I'm still right here. I, I, I don't want nothing else. And I know that ain't good English, but I, I, I don't want nothing else. I don't, I'm disconnected more than ever been in my life this world. Disconnected from money, disconnected from new cars and trucks, disconnected from houses, disconnected from a lot of stuff. See, now, God, so I'm branded in my heart. I'm branded. And I don't want to try, brand, you carry a cow out and brand him, he's got it the rest of his life. You can cut it off, but, but nature, stay, it'll stay there. And that brand says you belong to somebody. And so that, that means he's blessed, broke, now he's branded. Where are you at? Blessed, got saved. Carry me back where you got saved. Wonderful. Have you ever been broke? My breaking experience is just as real as my birthing experience. Branded came a few years later, and I found out God don't need me, but I sure do want Him to use me if He can. 